Honestly, guys, what are we, <laughs> what doing? Is, what are we doing here? Ping pong? <laughs> Ping pong? What is this? Come on. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. What's hey, up? guys. Yeah. Welcome to the Flat Out Fever Formula One podcast. We're back. That's what, what, that's what this is. That's what we do. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, hey, this mm-hmm. is episode 60. Thank you for everybody that's uh, stuck around. And if you're new, welcome. <laughs> um, so we begin today with uh, the obvious, like we like we stated, the Grand, uh, Spanish Grand Prix Jesus. What just happened this past yeah. weekend? But before yep. we go into that, uh, I just want to say uh, thanks to everybody that showed up again once again to Betty's. Uh, shout out to everybody. I know that it, it was a big ask because of the uh, of the Raptors game, Game Seven. Uh, we we played it at the same time. Bas- I know, but basketball. Yes, but exactly. Hardcore fans still showed up. We still had like a pretty good turnout. Thank you again. Uh, it was good to see everybody out in force, and we will see you again for you know in the not not this weekend, next weekend for the Monaco Grand Prix. We're doing it again at yes. 3 p.m. Uh, same time as uh, Barcelona. This time. I'm sure we'll see a, a few more people in the crowd. Um, Especially because it's Monaco. Exactly. Yeah. Should be pretty good. Should be pretty good. Now, I mean, geez, Danny. Take, yes. take, take it away. What what just happened? Now st- oh, I'm still trying to tweet this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what, what happened, man. Okay. The start of the race was crazy. Yes. Considering the tradition of this year 2016 <laughs> every race has to start crazy of course yeah. first or second or third corner <laughs> it's been amazing I mean, it's we've... been ridiculous Un- unpredictable so this is my second season of formula one tell us your thoughts man. uh and vastly more exciting and really only because there have been more crashes there have been a few there almost been... every first turn every first or second or third turn there's yeah, always there's... Someone running into someone else, or... but you know what's interesting about that that I find is that if that if that had been happening any other year or or pretty much um, like in years past we've seen it that like the first few races it just started with a bunch of crashes and not a lot of people were excited about it because they were saying that what that meant is that we had too much too many pay drivers too many too much um, lack of talent, uh, up, talent and, up and, and, and down experience. the grid. Now it's I think and I think maturity. the problem is the opposite. We have quite like one of the strongest <laughs> F1 fields we've seen in a quite a long in time. In a long time, decades. Like, the maybe the only like person that I'd say that you could right could rightfully say that don't deserve to be in F1 or like you know don't have enough talent for the seat is maybe Rio Harianto. Harianto yeah. But from anybody from Verline up at the top, we got champions, man. We got multiple world champions. We got Mercedes fucking playing Rochambeau. <laughs> and check, the, check this out. What you were just saying about um, excitement and whatnot. This season is averaging so far the most overtakes of any of mm-hmm. all time. We're at 73 average. Mm-hmm. The Chinese race was 160 uh, something. 161, 162. It's ridiculous. It's craziness. And Somebody's it's count like, was like made. I think they put it up to like 170 or something. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the, the, more than any other race by far, and over so far more than any other re- uh, season on average. There's all this talk. Like we spent some time last week going over the 2017 changes and all this, and the drivers and some of the stakeholders and people are complaining that this is going to make overtaking harder. It's gonna be more difficult. This is not what we want to see. I think maybe they need to make overtaking more difficult. <laughs> it's gotten a little crazy, no? A seventy-three average, a hundred sixty-one in China, close to a hundred this past weekend. Dan- Danny, but this is what we wanted to see. This is what I the, know. Well, apparently this is what the fans uh, were calling for. I, is it getting ridiculous? Like, I, are too many of... But can you rightfully say that too many of those overtake maneuvers have been artificially created? Because as no. far as I could tell, I mean, even though there were a lot of DRS passes, the, there were still plenty that weren't, that were spectacular to see. These these numbers I just quoted, I'm, I'm going to make clear, I don't know for sure if they include pit lane overtakes or not. 
Trump. but I think they do. Okay. I think yes, they do. They do. But still, but still. Yeah. You know, you got to find your window. If you don't want to get overtaken in the pits, you find your window and you do it then. It's, there's no excuse either way. But maybe the overtaking needs to be more difficult. We see some stronger fights, you know, like not just like. And well, we'll see. But it's going to be more difficult. But and engines are going to be evened out next year. These are. I think we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead now. of ourselves for the show today. Yeah. But let's. We'll get back to that in a bit, but for now, I'm just cut, uh, yeah. Well, anyways, Mike brought up his impression of being a new fan. You know, it's incredible. All time, I, ju I just wanted to like yeah. emphasize that all time this is the most exciting it can it can get. More or less. well, maybe not exciting, but as far as passing, passing. I was um, I was checking uh, this stat in Google Trends uh, uh, for this past week. Yeah. Uh, global Formula One searches went up 189 percent, and now how silly, how silly must Fernando Alonso be feeling right now? Remember when he was like, "Oh, F1 doesn't need a hero." Like, come on. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> what do you think's going on in the movie theaters? Have you seen the commercial lineup lately? Why? Everything is Marvel, Capcom, DC, comic books. What does this have to do with the race? Heroes. <laughs> Everybody needs heroes. That's what. That's what. The teens are about the twenty teens for sure. Exactly. <laughs> no, and 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 everybody's like, oh, I need a hero. Just, uh, Verstappen is like creating all kinds of sensational uh, yeah. shit going on in 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 his home country, and I think a lot of people have have really like he, he's brought a lot of attention to the sport. Let's let's make no mistake his about that. Superhero name is Max Unverstappable. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's printed across his shoulders. Uh, apparently, apparently, this is we we have visual confirmation of this. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Seen him flying it around at night. But okay, so let's I guess let's go to Max Verstappen in a minute because uh, I want to talk first about basically like what made the raise for me from the very beginning was yeah. that crash. Get those two guys out of the way, like yeah, they got they themselves <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> I was thinking, man, I'd swear, in the back of my, my, my head, I was like, I bet, like, this is going to happen. And want, like, in a situation like this, the Mercedes are going to take each other out. And they did. And they did, man. And they did in an accident that would have made Senna and Prost proud. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And uh, like I said right away, Sky got their opening credits for next year. Yeah. Three in a row, the, the two of them touching each other. <laughs> Oh, definitely game on. Wheel-to-wheel <laughs> yeah. -wheel contact. He's pushed him on the grass. Uh, it's going to be some shit like that with a 3D... You know what I mean? Yeah. A whooshing zoom, zoom in. What do you got? Mike, uh, that, that, uh, that last... <laughs> that second-to-last link there, that's... Uh, uh, it says Rochambeau. The Rochambeau. <laughs> the Rochambeau. Uh, yeah. Just... Uh, th this is what... Um, oh, yeah. I read this this yeah. morning. The, the, uh, this is the stewards' decision, basically, uh, about the collision, and it's it's actually pretty interesting to read. But they basically said at the very at, at the very end of it that um, we're giving like they're 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 gonna take no further action, basically because not because nobody was at fault, but because they were both at fault. <laughs> they were both at fault. Hamilton yeah. uh, apparently Hamilton took the blame this morning. Or yesterday afternoon. Listen, it it is tough, and I and I can see like um, uh, both sides of the argument. I was talking to my uh, my boss. He, he's uh, he's into a fun, and like, he was texting me yesterday, and like, hey, what did you think? Blah blah. blah. And, like he he was surprised when I when I told him like, listen, at the very beginning, I thought it was Lewis. Uh, I thought it was Lewis's fault. I thought I thought just from looking at it quite uh, at the first glance, I thought it was Lewis's fault. But then. Like after they showed the onboard, like no. you could you could see that like it was it was a bit of both. It was like they both like had some shit going on that if the other one hadn't been doing like something else too aggressive or too, um, or you know like they, then it would have been no. a definite like Hamilton had that gap. It was more Rosberg's fault a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but one thing that Anthony Davidson said um, was that listen, like it's sometimes when you're when you're trying to make a move. Sometimes the most, you have to back out. Well, the the responsibility know, of like whether or not like you're gonna like you're gonna result in a tricky situation is is of the guy that's attempting the move, not the guy in front, because the guy behind can see more. Um, and 
Hamilton should have been able to see that Rosberg was harvesting and that his braking was going to be unpredictable or at least not 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 normal not as usual so mm -hmm. it's it's a bit of both i don't know what do you think from what you saw mike uh well i think i think people almost sort of forget how fast that happened true right i mean these are like <laughs> seconds you have to sort of make a decision right away and yeah. obviously these are trained quote unquote pilots uh which i always think is a hilarious word to call these guys but but they are right i mean you can call them drivers too uh, yeah we, i'm gonna call them drivers from now on uh, <laughs> it's like the spanish and the italians call them pilots a lot um but i i I, I tend to sort of side with Lewis on this one. I, I was really kind of surprised at how fast judgments were being thrown out. Uh, like like Nicky Lauda, right? Like he's just like, no, it was Lewis', Lewis fault uh, or however he, he speaks. <laughs> um, and my gut reaction when it first happened, I was like, I don't know, man. Like this doesn't seem like it was just one person's fault. People are quick to throw the blame though. That's right. for sure. <laughs> well, you know, that makes for like really entertaining highlights, right? It's like, oh, yeah. Nicky Lauda said it's Lewis Hamilton's fault. Yeah. And like, I, and like, I think it was you or Danny that were, were that were saying like, I thought they were buddies. Like I thought like, <laughs> I thought Nicky Lauda just loved Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> Apparently not. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's it's, uh, it's Nicky Lauda. You yeah. know, it's, it, it, yeah. <laughs> they both have private jets. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> they are in the jet set. <laughs> the jet set. Uh, but no, it, it, it was an interesting crash. I mean, at the end of the day, like, that's it, it seems like mo the both of them were like, you know what? We, we're just going to go with what... Uh, with what the steward said and like we're just gonna move on mm -hmm. and that was that was good to see like because before like it was getting it was getting annoying like after every every one of like their silly crashes they both like were either trying to blame each other or one like fully took the blame and like then was maybe stopping short of tears yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um but but it doesn't take away from the fact that this was mercedes like double non-point score first ever like so, yeah, since they came since back to six, the one. 62 races. Yeah. 62 races straight. Since they came back, Mercedes have scored points in every race. At least one car's finished. Yeah. Every wow. 62 races in a row. Now, something else that sort of came out of this, yeah. uh, out of these, out of this headline, at least. Yeah. It, the crash sort of gave an, a, another platform for the Rosberg Hamilton trade or movement thing. Not to jump ship on what we were talking about, but yeah. it did sort of have a hand in being like oh maybe we should separate these drivers yeah maybe right? this this relationship has reached its point of maturity right yeah. <laughs> let's say because they're both clearly very competent drivers yeah uh and the both their egos are too big to really fit yeah. in one room yeah um so yeah no i thought it was really interesting think uh, about that though 62 races of points this is we just said at the off the top this is our 60th podcast mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I've been sick once or twice. We had to bail yesterday. I've been on vacation one or two times. You've been away. You yeah. got sick. Look, we, and then you've been away one or two times. You had yeah. your, your band stuff. Yeah. You got sick. We we got some of those done together. We got points uh, points on some. Like we did it like <laughs> with half the team. But like that's really impressive when you put it in in those terms well, I'm impressive like, in terms we're of we're doing this as a hobby you know what i mean like we hang out once a week and talk about racing like yeah you guys we got paid show up and do this <laughs> seven days a week sit-ups and torture chambers and sh neck chambers and shit holy fuck it, races in a row. it's a breath and, it, and it's a testament to their reliability and uh um streams, it's okay. streams all fucked not the Sorry, best please. not the best weekend ever but Bottas and Massa the only two drivers this season so Wait, far too to score still, every are we still on though yeah we're still live oh okay but sorry to, sorry to our live listeners you guys the uh the not live listeners uh, will be getting the yeah. the good quality i don't know sorry to fucking about youtube it. Jeez, man. man i guess it's uh anyways Bottas and Massa the only two drivers speaking of reliability the only two drivers this season both scored points every race really so far yeah they're the only two guys, and the Williams on the same team, the Williams. Yeah, yeah, the Williams. They fucked, you know, Massa had uh, some. Tra he qualified like eleventh or twelfth, right? The team uh, messed up his strategy, sent him out in traffic, but he pulled it out. 
<laughs> hey, so it, sorry. One, one, one quick thing though, because <laughs> I just wanna. It might be one point or something, but it, you did it. The last thing that I have, like on the on the Rosberg and and, and Hamilton thing, is that. Yep. Sorry, I thought you. Were doing. Okay, they should just do that every time. Come on. <laughs> that was. Do you terrible. remember how the room lit out? Okay, when we were at Betty's watching with everybody, like as soon as ev- like when we saw that accident, everybody was like, "Yeah, what?" Like, like the the room erupted because. <laughs> Because that was everybody knew that once those two were out, yeah, they, they, we, we were gonna have a race. Right, we were gonna right. have yeah, exactly. a freaking race, yeah. and that's what we got. Like, so uh, something I was thinking about, and I wasn't quite understanding how it worked, was yeah. uh, in this race. They, they were saying it's hard to overtake in this race, mm-hmm. uh, in in, uh, in this circuit. Now, why yeah. why was that? The, the corners, long corners, the corners, yeah. long fast corners. Yeah. Okay. When you have those long fast corners, yeah. um. The I guess the option the options for the best racing line or or a racing line that that's gonna be the fastest by a, by far mm-hmm. are very limited. So everybody's gonna try to be taking those, and if you step right. outside of that line too much, then um, then you lose too much time. Mm, that's okay. the nature of those corners. Now, conversely, like what what drivers like and what what produces a lot of overtaking is like this the the quicker like sharper Hair, like hairpins yeah like, okay short quick i mean short tight corners Beca- okay. because those allow yeah. the driver a lot more wiggle room as opposed to like how they can place the car in and out and there's there's just like a lot more lines that you can take without losing too much time oh okay yeah. you can try okay. to overtake the other guy under braking like you just brake later brake harder than him and then hopefully getting out of the corner as well as well, if you can get on the throttle quicker, mm-hmm. you can get out. Medi- although, medium although, corners, sort of in the middle, like you can try to beat them out of it. And the fast corners, they're more, it's more level playing field, I think. Okay. Just harder. Okay. Yeah. yeah. More, there's more, more. more of a tight line that you have to take to get the max speed out of that corner, and mm-hmm. you just go single file. And yeah. it's now this there's is. only really two tight corners in that track. The, it, things like elevation and camber, uh, or. or it, it, of, of of the track like really like if it's off camera or on camera um mm-hmm. it, it really really helps to like switch this out a lot so they're not but by any means like like 100 percent like all everything obeys at all the corners there are some sweet like really fast corners that you can overtake at but there th- those are those are why like i guess like a lot of people like those like that's why people like the like just those corners that were maybe a bit too fast and too and too wide that scared you <laughs> Yeah, a lot of them have been paved over or turned into yeah. chicanes and stuff like that. But there's there's a lot of tracks just in the season that some of them are for high speed, some of them are for low speed, and some of them are for balance where you need... You'll see, like, the Red Bulls beating everybody, the high speed ones. You'll see, like, the Mercedes and the... I don't know, the, maybe the Toro Rosso, the, the higher speed teams. And then, these are not bad tracks, though. Yeah. Um, these These... The, these tracks that don't often produce a lot of overtaking it's they're so because it, it, they can be highly technical it's testing the driver yeah, they're more physical yeah they're more g-force like this like this past track that just happened require a lot of more concentration so then the game is you know you're that, that's when it like the whole like uh chess game aspect of, of formula one comes right, into play right and like your mental concentration your mental ability to not fuck it up just keep just you just know keep going keep going keep going keep going don't get or for the coming years getting rid of some of the super complicated uh sorry which one aerodynamics the very top one wing art I highlighted the mclaren wing art this is according to ted anyways it might not be highlighted but oh yeah, yeah. Acor- according to ted this but, is the most <laughs> the most complicated wing that's been brought to the circuit and if you look at it man just look at that what? look at so many veins across the top and the right side the adjustments those those hooks that are yeah connecting the lower elements to the higher ones these things here these metal things to like there's about a dozen elements on, on that wing it's it's but even absolutely even crazy. at the termination here look look at that look at that look at that bit of carbon fiber how it splits like in a y here that's nuts. And that's oh, yeah. right there too. Oh yeah, at the, at the back. Jesus yeah. Christ, that's insane. The curls at the end too. The curl there. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, it's incredible. 
Looks so, like uh, Frankenstein. McLaren yeah, brought this in. I, it, these Jensen things are didn't... not necessarily gray looking. Like I mean, it's it is a bit of a what's going on there, right? And Jensen didn't really perform too much better than Alonso with this. He did finish the race, but yeah. you know, Alonso, Alonso got knocked out of the race because of some kind of computer problem. Yeah, they said the engine is still fine. <laughs> this engine is not damaged. It looked it, it looked like it could it could have been electronics, honestly, just from from looking at how. That's what, that's what they said. Out. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. come back with that same same engine and reuse it. True, true. But that wing didn't help them out as cra as crazy as it looks. But I'm sure it didn't help out the people following them <laughs> either. <laughs> just the whole point. Just add some, throw up some vortices. Screw up the air for the next person. Yeah. <laughs> Kvyat, before let's move our way up the up or down before we get back to the top. I guess. Jeez. Kvyat. Uh, he had the fastest lap. He had the Fa fastest. Toro Rosso's first fastest lap. Yeah. Amazing. So good for him. And But he also said uh, a little bit bitterly after the race that he said, I could have won that race for Red Bull. No, that's he said, I could have won that race for Red Bull. Come on. That's not, I don't know. Could have taken on another Ferrari, <laughs> too, while you're at it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, you know, there's been talk about this might be his last year. His yes. seat might be up for grabs, yes. blah, blah. But now there's rumors that there's... The seat is locked down for him for at least maybe one more year. And there was a quote. Some uh, uh, I wish I had the source now. I lost. I accidentally closed the tab. And I lost the source. But Kimi Raikkonen said that Arriva Bene is the best boss in the world. Or oh, something yeah. Like that. He said that he, this guy is the best boss in the world. Where he's about or, or, to no, no. He's, he, no he, he said something he's, like it's, it's the best boss he's had. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. The best boss that he's ever had. <laughs> Whereas... Arriva Bene is about to get replaced by James well, Allison. For that is the, that that is the is talk. The, this is the other speculation. Yeah. So, but the two tie together, you know. You know, Raikkonen's got Arriva Bene's back. Uh, Maybe Arriva Bene's like, you know, you, you have my back. You put out some some good news for me. Help me keep my job. And I'll help you <laughs> keep your seat next year. <laughs> Arriva Bene kind of looks like he should be in a uh, cigarette commercial <laughs> yeah right he is he is in a cigarette commercial yeah he's, he's that's what he's doing he, he used to <laughs> be a Marlboro's. cigarette commercial that's that's <laughs> i that's the thing about this i don't know if you're joking or not no 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 no, no. no. He, he's a he's a philip morris guy we, we've talked about this uh before if, oh my god and actually ted ted do you remember remember last week we watched the ted's notebook yeah. and uh ted had like a few of his pages like flew out of his notebook and got stuck in his umbrella and all that oh yeah on that that notebook that brilliant broadcast yeah. that one he he went up and he was talking he's like so he, here's uh ferrari's smoking tent ferrari has in their f1 agreement that at every track they can put up no it's, it's not their agreement they just do it they just, well, yeah they have because they bring more tent. cargo for every race by that any other team like by a lot by far, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and they, part of that is like they carry this little smoking booth it's a tent that they their team smokes in because they it's, it's a ferrari <laughs> smoking booth yeah. Yeah. oh you're gonna ask these italians to stop smoking get out of here yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna leave the sport yeah <laughs> but they have they have a tent that they set up in the back of the paddock and, and they, carry around the world smoking. yeah I bet that tent stinks. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's this color. It's a it's a red red and white tent. Red tent. Okay. Yeah, with the frag. It's, yeah. it's but you know you got you gotta love him for for sticking to their guns like. <laughs> and and you wonder like so Ferrari I don't I don't know this for sure obviously but Ferrari threw on the white elements for their classic livery this year on the yeah. car. Those were cigarette. Those are from the cigarette days. No. What did you More get? or less. Well, it, okay, it, it, here's it, the thing with those it, that a lot of people don't don't uh, uh, don't realize all all of the sponsorship space like for stickers on the Ferrari car like that that the the the, the advertising space on the Ferrari car the stickers those that space is owned actually it's or it's contracted out by uh, to Philip Morris to Philip Morris to Marlboro. It, Oh wow! To Marlboro cigarettes because that's, they that's used to I'm be so the, they used to be new, Ferrari's big sponsor. The new in quotes um, classic livery that they brought this year, the white could yeah, be from they, Philip no, Morris being like subliminally like no, that's what they the always red, do. The red and white pack there's, of our cigarettes. There's no mystery. It looks like a box of cigarettes. Dude, like there's that. no mystery to that. They yeah. do that every single year. That's why their logo is like kind of like shaped like that, so it looks kind of it, yeah. just, it kind of could remind you at speed could remind you. Of, um, it's just, of I'm, just, I'm just throwing you know, that Marlboro allegedly. is not allowed. But, well, cigarettes yeah. are not. Cigarette advertising is banned in Formula One. Yeah. But yeah. somehow, Most a sports. cigarette company Almost owns the advertising space around the Ferrari. Yeah. It's which, which is weird. So I guess all these companies that have stickers, 
on the on the actual Ferrari car, like they actually have to pay Philip Morris Basically, for it. Yeah. It's so it's so it's so weird how that relationship you know works. It's you know what's really funny is that yeah. I when I think of Ferrari, I still think of Marlboro. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I still do. Exactly. Yeah, and especially that's what that that's what the white canopy around the driver and everything. It's yeah, for. It's, yeah, it's like a box of cigarettes yeah. when they're, that they're driving. Exactly. Um, but yes, uh, <laughs> Mauricio Rivabene, he's been like up and down the F1 paddock for a number of years, but it and usually in Ferrari gear. But what he was was. Um, the vice president of um, Philip Morris Europe or Philip Morris Italy or something like that. Oh, wow. And because Philip Morris has a big stake in Ferrari, uh, he was like kind of like the – he was Marlboro's <coughs> F1 guy and basically dedicated like full-time to working with Ferrari. Wow. And that's – that's eventually, that's that's how he made it into the team. He was – before being um, team principal of Ferrari, he was from – he was still at Philip Morris. <laughs> blows my mind yeah blows my mind i guess if, if you work still smoking cigarettes i, I guess if you work for long Stop. enough at phyllis morris you yourself start to look like a cigarette yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry the, yeah, Mar- the marlboro of, he's the track, human guys. marlboro man <laughs> it was a bit of a sidetrack sorry <laughs> i think it was a worthwhile sidetrack because yeah. now i know yeah there you go now everyone knows. work for a cigarette company join an f1 team <laughs> This, that's that's how ridiculous it is to get into F one. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody who's obviously never smoked any cigarettes, Max Verstappen. Oh yeah, let's. Right, it's it time to start getting. Uh, into, otherwise, he'd have some hair on his chest by now. <laughs> well, that's that's the, that's. So the the, the the big news, right? Do you know how my okay, my girlfriend found out about this and like almost spoiled the race result for me? Oh yeah, through a freaking fashion a blog. Fashion blog. Like, that... She showed me like I scrolled down the page. There was just like picture of like dresses and and like little shoes and whatever. And all of a sudden, like at like the newest post had been the news that Max Verstappen won um, the 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 Grand Prix. Oh my god! And, and really, no, no, it, it's like it was popping up in concerts in the Netherlands. The news, the Dutch news are going wild. The, the, um, there's a newspaper that's calling him the Lionel Messi of Formula One. Oh my god! And, and I don't know if you guys like follow soccer. I mean, I don't follow soccer at all. Like, yeah. no. but I know who, I know that Lionel Messi is like a soccer guy. Yeah, I know that he's like one of like he's been compared to being like one of like the greatest in history, like up there with Maradona and Pelé or something wow. like that, uh, which is a big deal. It's like calling like anybody Gretzky is like so he just don't throw that name around yeah, so lightly exactly so basically yeah imagine that imagine that as yeah. if the Dutch media was saying Max Verstappen is basically Gretzky yeah, the new Gretzky wow it's, it's the new it's the Gretzky of Formula One <laughs> the superlatives abound and we're definitely gonna start getting a bunch of new F1 followers if you're a new F1 follower right now and you're listening still Welcome again. Pull up, pull up a couple of these Verstappen links here. Yeah. Look, let's look through. The papers, it's crazy. The, somebody posted a, yeah, this. Here's a picture of him in his motorhome, I guess, uh, staring at his trophies. He's got his first bottle of alcohol in front of him. <laughs> Chandon, look at this. All the Dutch newspapers with his face in the front. He's got a pile of them there. All the articles of himself. He's got full pages on one, two, Whoa. three, four, five, six, seven of know. them, full front pages. This was posted by Max Verstappen? Uh, I don't know who Probably posted not. that. I don't know who posted those. <laughs> but oh, look I've, at I found look those. At uh, just a link online. Like, look at look at look at. That. <laughs> That's uh, like oh my god, Max for seven. There he goes. <laughs> the uh, the newspapers were posted by Martin Mueller. There you go, Martin Gamer on Twitter. If you want to check him out. Cool. So, so listen, big fan. <laughs> yeah, there's a picture of Max Verstappen in the about two, 2000, 2001 with Michael Schumacher when he is three or four years old. Not Schumacher, Verstappen. Yeah, no, I was Look confused. at him, man. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. Raikkonen Reich, in the uh, in the post race in his interview, he's like, you know, he's like, congrats to him. You know, obviously, like, he won the race, fair and mm. square, or whatever. And he's like, you know what's crazy, though, is I raced. In Formula One against his father, he's oh, like, "That's my crazy." God. <laughs> and then he, he actually laughed. Kimi <laughs> Reckon and laughed. No, <laughs> I couldn't find a video clip of it. Wow, but... oh, not like we could put it up. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, like we could show it. Or these Take it down right dicks Jesus. would pull us. <laughs> but he raced against this guy's father and then his son. And don't forget what I said last week. 
Max Verstappen's dad in 1998 took over the seat of Kevin Magnussen's dad in the Stewart F1 team. Which, which is today which the became Red Bull. Jaguar, which became in 2005 Red Bull, which is now his son's seat. 18 <laughs> years later, the year he was born, yeah. <laughs> Josh Verstappen took the seat of K Mag's dad in the team where his son now sits. And his work is done. It's pretty. Yeah, yeah. His father's work is done. He's like, I think he said something about stepping back from his management, and uh, they were pointing it out all weekend <laughs> uh, on, on the Sky coverage. How yeah. uh, for basically what else can he do since for his kid? well, but since uh, Max got now to F one, kick everyone's ass and on all throughout track. his career in like Formula Three or whatever. Max was very active, very or sorry, uh, Jos was very active, very involved. He was always at the races. He was always like sitting at the back. But this weekend, he was just yeah, he was just chilling. Like he wasn't like. like yeah, he was just he, he wasn't he wasn't the chilling standard. at the at the Red Bull like uh, in in the garage. No, he was just watching the race like somewhere else. It's the new standard because Ham Lewis Hamilton's dad he was hanging out every week till he was like yeah. twenty seven, twenty eight. No, you I, know what I mean? Like yeah, an but, extra decade. Yeah, but that's not that's that, Lewis Hamilton's dad wanted to keep hanging around. Yeah, Lewis, was, Lewis basically like fired his dad. This was Yo, probably yeah. <laughs> Jaws' brother was like, yeah, like you said, like he was just like, all right, my job here is done. All right, let's just. Oh, sit I'm back. sure. I'm sure he'll still be around. He's oh, got yeah. friends there. And oh yeah, yeah. Loves but, racing, but but he won't be like intense. What else, yeah, what else can he do? His yeah. son's got to talk on the track now. <laughs> He's got the best <laughs> opportunity in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And Renault's coming with a huge upgrade next week. It looks like they're pushing for next week instead of Canada even. Yeah, extra extra week early. That's it. Wake but up. but don't That's forget it. that every time that a team introduces something like that. Like, there's always the chance that it might blow up. Mm -hmm. It requires a lot more pressure. It's 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 a system that's gonna put really test the engine. Obviously, they wouldn't have they like Renault has very competent engineers, I'm sure, and 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 a competent dyno where they would have tested this uh, uh, their engine a long time before even bringing mm -hmm. it to the track. They're not gonna bring it just cause. Yeah. But there's always like there's unpredictable stuff that could happen in the race. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But. All right, we'll, we'll get into it in a little bit, but testing is today. Mid-season testing yes. is today, and based on this morning's results already, Red Bull saying, yeah, Renault, we want this engine Sweet. next week already. So we'll, we'll see. One, one more thing, for, though. Wait, do, you, do you got more Max? A little more, yeah. Okay, go, go. I was going to say, I think Red Bull Red Bull really loves to make records, mm -hmm. even outside of F1. They, oh, I like where done, this like, is going. You know what I mean? Like yes. Red Bull's looking for, they did the skydive from space. <laughs> They've been trying to go like deepest in the ocean, the biggest yeah, backflip yeah. on a motorcycle. Sell like, the most bull but, testicles. Yeah, who, can, who can, who can ride a tricycle the fastest on a backflip through fire? Like yeah, all, this, yeah. all this, all kinds of crazy shit, right? <laughs> this weekend they broke a lot of records though. So Rick, Ricardo was kind of complaining, yeah. not kind of low key a bit after the race, but he said that the team put him on a three stop strategy and he's not sure why and he was a bit upset and. We'll get into it. Yes. Ferrari, I say, I, Vettel I, and Ferrari said the same I was, thing. He, I, say, he I was saying that a, two -stopper. I was right. saying that at Betty's man. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you they, knew you had it in the bag, if you threw some numbers, yeah. like like you could you could you could imagine somebody like um, uh, Christian Horner getting on the radio as soon as the opportunity became available. He went like just immediately got got back in touch with somebody at Milton Keynes. Uh, you know, because like they're always like in contact with the main factory and like with their big computers. Say, yo, run me a simulation right now, like uh, somewhere like uh, probably around the 30th, second, 33rd lap. Run me a simulation right now. Can we get this kid to win? How, like, how can we do it? What's the best strategy? How can we do it? Should we look into it? And then somebody, like, somebody got back after like 20 minutes of like, you know, throwing some charts and measuring and doing some statistics saying, yes, if we do this and this and that, we got it in the back, we can get, we can get the newest record. And of course you want that. Yeah. If there was an yeah. opportunity to go and get yeah. that, there's, it would be silly from a commercial standpoint. You have to know that teams, team principles, his job, the job of Red Bull. Uh, racing is to sell, sell pop to sell cans. Let's that not forget. Sprayed all over him. <laughs> yeah, no, fucking <laughs> Red Bull, Red Bull. You need to invest in better cans. But <laughs> the metallic strawberry smell. Uh, yeah, it, honestly, like it. That's their job. If they knew that they could get that that record there on the book, and you know it's a record that's going to be very hard to break with the oh, way the re yeah. the way the regulations the new super license records. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, rules. Yeah, yes, because yes. nobody. Yeah, you can't even get a super license to be eighteen. So he, Jesus Christ, you, like you have to like 
He's Come 18 and 79 days or something, right? Yeah. Uh, he's eight, 18, 18 and 220 18? something. Oh, 220 something? 220 something. He's yeah. almost 19? No. Well, he's two thirds of the way there, I guess. Sure. I, but anyway. Um, flies, man. <laughs> uh, so you would take that. That record is going to be super hard to break unless like somebody comes like out of nowhere and wins on their first year of F1 with like a competent team. I don't know like how, how, how sure is that to happen. So anytime that anybody for a lo for the foreseeable future looks up youngest F1 race winner, it's Max Verstappen is going to appear there. And if you look him up, it's going to, it's going to say that he was driving for Red Bull. Mm. It's, it's, it only makes sense. If you're just looking at it, if you're not thinking, yeah. um, it, on the sporting side, if you're just making a rational decision that makes sense commercially, what, like you would do that. It, if it made sense to pursue that, you would do that. And Daniel Ricciardo should not be surprised. He knows who he's working for. Yeah. He knows who pays the bills. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And I don't know. It's, it's up to him. It's up to Ricciardo to prove he's the best on the team still anyways. Exactly. What he Why? did, he kind of did with qualifying. He's at least like super quick that he's not, that he's not getting his feathers ruffled. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'd say that this race proved that Max Verstappen is like better in every single way than Danny Ricciardo because they were in, 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 in such different strategies. Now this the strategy was weird also because Vettel did the same thing as Ricciardo with the <laughs> with the tires like they I guess the undercut or whatever it is that they were trying to do didn't work where it was a huge mis miscalculation. Uh, guys, well, it seems like we're having some tech. Sorry, sorry about my vocabulary. No, no, I'm fucking furious. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to uh, to everybody, and uh, if you're still hanging around, thank you. We have somebody. Somebody said you're still alive. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. We're we're good. We're good. We just had a bit of an internet hiccup. Sorry, guys. Sorry, buddy. Uh, does everybody? Does anybody even remember what we were talking about? Hopefully, everyone likes workaholics. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about. Uh... We're back. We're good. We we're good. We're good. We're gonna edit out that bullshit after. Uh yeah right so Red Bull likes records Red Bull likes yes. to break records they broke a few yes this weekend the first driver in the nineties to win a race youngest driver to win a race youngest yeah. driver to lead a race yes first Dutchman to win a race right first Dutch first Dutchman to lead a race yes uh youngest person to win a race first teenager to win a race first teenager to lead a race <laughs> <laughs> he's still a you teenager call all those, yeah he's still a teenager. Jeez. Although technically considered a man, I assume, by international law. Oh, of course, yeah. 18-year-old <laughs> Max Verstappen. 18-year-old, 220-something days. Max Verstappen. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Hey, I don't know if, if, if everybody missed this, but I was, what I was saying is, listen, if you were tasked with getting the more advertising money out of your F1 investment, um, you would go for that. There's no like, there wouldn't. I wouldn't even call it a conspiracy. I would call that like, yeah. It's, I, if somebody told me like, like if in 20 years, like some somebody's memoir came out and said, yes, we actually like did like rig the the Spanish Grand Prix and uh, to stack the odds in Max favor, I I, I would be like, of course uh, you did. Of course they yeah. did. <laughs> to wait 20 years for that. Yeah, but yeah, it's it, you would do that if you were thinking hours. pure it's commercial a fact. Sense. A beer commercial, pure. <laughs> oh, no. In pure commercial sense, that would make, like, yeah, that, that would be <laughs> the the clear strategy. There's no, there's no surprises there. No, there's there's no surprises. Listen, there listen though. But one thing that I, I I hope that it doesn't come across that way. I'm not taking away anything from Max's victory. Like that was an impressive, impressive display. Mm -hmm. um, Throw up the came face. Also, Sorry. also from the same page. <laughs> <laughs> it's not actually dirty, though. Yeah, no, that's it's the best. I think he yeah, he, he had the Verstappen best killed it. the best reaction when spraying. Too bad he didn't get to experience real champagne on the podium. Let's let's not forget that that thing that they that he's spraying there is not champagne. It's Chandon. It's Chandon, <laughs> which is uh, sparkling wine from America. 
Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, there, there he goes. How pleased is he? Jesus Christ, can you imagine? And I think that's 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 what's making it such a like such a story, right? Like, so it's 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 really easy to get carried away. I th I think mm -hmm. and then, again, not that there's absolutely no reason to to not get carried away. There's he, his successes. And, you know, if you look at that picture of, like, what he was doing in 2013, then 2014, then 2015, uh, then then this year, it, he started, like, he three years ago, he was racing, like, carts, like, little, like, like carts, man. Yeah. And <laughs> and, and now he's he's a, he's a Formula One race winner. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a great story. It's a, it, 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 I'm still buzzing from watching that, that Grand Prix. And I'm sure, I'm sure, like, half of the Formula One world is still uh, in shock. There's a lot of races this year though, where it's gonna be illegal for him to spray this Shandong. Oh yeah, like let, let's yeah let's 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 see what's gonna happen. AT, in, I in, guess uh, the drinking age in the US Grand Prix. Is 18, or they're just cool about giving your kids a little. I think it's getting 18, your yeah. kids a little drunk. They, I, th I think they are too. They are. <laughs> 18. Yeah. Montreal is 18. Yeah. So Canada will be fine. You'll be fine in Canada. Monaco probably 18. Yeah, they still run on. Uh, I'm, I'm sure all. I think all, all a, of Europe. They still have uh, like a royal family, so yeah, it's probably 18 to whatever the fuck you want. It's probably even it's less than that. Like in some European countries, it's probably it's like 16 okay, with, like, with 16 parents, 16 or 17. Yeah, yeah. I know even oceanic laws like that. I went on a cruise a few months at the yeah. podcast I missed. Yeah, on the ship, if I think if you were 16. And you had a signed parental consent. You could drink as much as you want. And that boat is uh, is from uh, Norway, right? It's a Norwe yeah. Norwegian boat. Yeah. Probably registered to Europe. I'm not sure. It's, it was Norwegian cruise line that I went on. Yeah, I think that their their port is probably like it's Cop or probably what's some, it, Oslo or something. Yeah, yes, somewhere in Europe. Yeah. But I think they're once you're out at sea, though, you're just in internet. You're just at maritime yeah. law, right? Yeah, you just sweet. drink whenever, whatever, do whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, very impressive. And I, and I but. <laughs> And I was I was listening to uh, Peter Windsor's um, thing, his YouTube channel. He put out a video, and he was like, you know, freaking, this is historic, and it is. It, of course, it is historic. It's the youngest. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is historic. But he was like, oh, it's a historic moment. Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the the BBC podcast, uh, Checker Flag. They were like, oh my god, this is you know where, and I couldn't help but feel that. Yes, it's granted for sure, and and, and there w it's emotional. There's, it's good for F one, good for the show, good for everything. Like I really love that this happened, but I feel like you have to be careful not to be not to get carried away too much, right? Um, with this, and um, Mike, do you want to like load that uh, that crazy the young the youngest uh, Grand Prix drivers? Because so I I started the thinking about drive? it's it's on the book. Yeah, just, just before you do, let me let me throw this in quick. Because this just came out, I think, yesterday or the day before, oh, mm -hmm. five days ago. Red Bull mm -hmm. just snapped up for their young driver team, a man named, or a, a boy, a boy named Richard Vershoor mm -hmm. to their junior team. And they picked him up uh, from one of the junior races at Russia. Mm -hmm. He was racing in Formula 4, and uh, he's also Dutch, I believe. Oh, yeah. They're, so, of course, they're, they're getting prepared for, for, for the huge influx of, of interest from uh, from the Netherlands and Nordic countries I'm I'm sure of it and it's great it's a, it's a great story that, to hear I don't know if uh, if you guys if any if anybody's on reddit one of the things that somebody posted recently was this Dutch commentator basically losing it and like just having a very emotional time yeah. um, over the last lap uh, just watching my commentating on Max Verstappen and it was like I don't know Dutch at all, and like his emotion really, like it, it, it moved came you. Through. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. really came through. It moved you. Um, and apparently this guy actually he's been like really like plucking along, like just really, really, really pushing for F one uh, in the Netherlands for a very long just time. For sure, uh, Richard for sure. This is who you're talking about? No, no, no. The, the commentator, oh. the Dutch oh, commentator. The commentator. Yeah, the commentator like had been like just Sorry. really for years, like really following the sport. Sometimes like. Um, not even actually like they didn't even have enough budget to send him to the races, but he'd still like keep commentating like just from the feed at, at his studio, stuff like that. And so cool. this guy just like plowed through like all the dark times in, in the Netherlands. And like now, like he's, he's, he's the Netherlands, like F1 guy. So like he's been rewarded. So it's, it's, it's a cool story for that. Definitely that they're, they're, um, uh, there's, it's going to open a lot of like commercial possibilities. There's going to be definitely more money put into f1 and a lot more attention their coverage is going to improve 
as a consequence of that there's no way it it, it, mm-hmm. it won't so it's it's a great it's great news for for dutch fans um of the sport if anybody's from the netherlands here listening uh max is in sixth it's, place it's in the championship too yeah right behind wow. <laughs> right behind Ricciardo. Yeah, but there's all the other shit going on with the points now even like kimi raikkonen being ahead of uh um of, of, of hamilton. hamilton for example yes. oh, yeah. four or five points ahead, four <laughs> points ahead. yeah That's crazy but but again i think it's great and it's and it's great for f1 but pull it up it's it's in the book here in the in the, sh- in the book it's called, it's called uh I, I can't actually sorry but uh it's called <laughs> uh youngest grand prix winner youngest gp winners oh, okay yeah and if i could borrow your keyboard here and, and this is just something something a little that i just wanted to uh, to share with you guys if you want to full screen it Hold on, let me just make sure I, yeah we're yeah good. we're good yeah okay so this is just uh oh something i put together here it's the top 10 youngest grand prix winners and i plotted uh the age uh, that they uh, that they won their first grand prix uh, mm-hmm. against the year when it happened here um but ignore like the that red line over there for now um but what's going on here is a distribution from 10 all the way up to first first uh of course but let, let, let's go through the list though to see like what this brings so l- starting from the oldest in that list of top 10 let's go right now a bit of a zoom in so you can see it a little better there it is from 75 and from the beginning of the championship even uh till now and we go to number 10 and the 10th youngest one in f1 was michael schumacher 23 years 240 days in the 1992 belgian grand prix look at him there how young oh, does wow. he look like just in that uh in that benetton that that was basically what started the michael schumacher euphoria in germany so now moving to the next in the list, number nine, um, from J- Belgium, Jackie X. Back in the day, in the 1968 French Grand Prix, full of water, as, as was Michael Schumacher's first victory, it was a wet rain. Where, and everybody knows that Michael Schumacher like, was known as like, a, being a, a bit of an expert. He made a difference in the rain he, uh, as, as a young driver, taking mm-hmm. the risks, putting the car where, where you had to. Jackie X, for that time, over for this era in the Formula One, 23 years, 188 days in 1968 in a very, very wet track of Rouen. Look at that. There he is, thrashing the Ferrari around. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 he, and he had his victory. And then he moved on to have a pretty successful career uh, in sportsman. I think he won Le Mans. He never won a cha- an F1 championship, but he was, he was, a, he was good. Mm. Uh, like, like Kimi Raikkonen, good, I'd say. Okay. Um, uh, Jackie X, again, made history. Number eight. Now, further down our, our list, a name that I'm that you're only vaguely familiar with now, Robert Kubica. He was like, he was around in F1 a little while ago. Uh, he won in the 2008 Canadian Grand Prix. I believe there was, it, it was another bit of a wet race. <laughs> um, Didn't he also almost die there? Uh, no, actually, he had a big crash yeah. um, a bit later on that kind of yeah. ruined his well, career. Well, not the same year, but... Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah late, later in his career. Yeah, I'm now... Not, I remember that. Number seven. Kimi Raikkonen. Oh, wow. Look at a young Kimi. Back when he used to smile. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> 23 years, 157 days. He won the, the 2003 Malaysian Grand Prix driving for McLaren. Back in the days of people... Like, this is the era that people remember Raikkonen in, in, in like his full glory. They, some say right. that Raikkonen has never been as fast as he was here or as uh, much of a competent driver. Um, going to number six now. Who else but my champion, our champion, <laughs> at 22, 22 years, 154 days, the at, 2007, at the 2007 Canadian Grand Prix, look at him being double teamed in Champagne there. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why a lot of people say that he loves coming to Canada. It's because, because he had his first, his, his first victory there. Wow. It's, it's, he's very emotional about Canada. He actually definitely does uh, like to come to Montreal mm-hmm. to race. Oh, one of the colonies. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> now to number five. Uh, you can tell by the color blue. These are older guys. So Bruce McLaren. Oh, wow. The Bruce McLaren at 22 years. In 1959, he was very young. He was a, a very young from New Zealand. He went to Britain. He eventually started his team that is the McLaren team today. He had some success. 
Number four, <laughs> this one is the one that I'm not, I'm not so sure. This is a guy called Troy Rutman, uh, that he won the 1952 Indi Indianapolis 500. He mostly raced in America. He only took part in F1 races, like maybe like two or three F1 races mm -hmm. or something like that. But he won the Indy 500 and the Indy 500 and that in those days was cons counted as for points for the f1 world championship oh, but wow. but hardly anybody like any of the Europe european teams bothered uh, going, going to indianapolis okay. like sometimes not even ferrari showed up <laughs> anyway but now we're going back we're going down to like the little number so number three and number three in this youngest list who else but el nano <laughs> right there and there he is in 2003 in the hungarian grand prix 22 years 26 days Get it, we're, getting, we're getting closer. And there he goes. And then the previous record keeper, of course, was Sebastian Beto. Vettel. The first appearance of Il Dito. <laughs> <laughs> there he is in his Toro Rosso Finger. uniform. It was, he wasn't yeah. racing for Red Bull. He was a Toro Rosso guy. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. in, in Italy, another wet race. Mm. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And then, of course, down to number one, we have Max. Th the new guy. <laughs> There he is. Now, a couple of things that are that are interesting to note with this with this chart. I I sort of looked at it here, and like it's it, it's it's very easy to see that a pattern emerges, especially when you don't count these. Look at what happened these two years now, from the seventies to the nineties. There's twenty years that there was nothing really going on in terms of no uh, children allowed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and this, uh, curiously enough, this is. You know when when uh, um, rush the movie like the, the story happened here. Yeah. Gilles Villeneuve is here. These are these are the golden days of F one, right? Um, and, and they and were the golden days of F one. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and and this is a reason why maybe uh, people like Bernie and, and and the older statements uh, is the older statement of the sport are uh, saying like you know we should go back to these days where there were no kids in the track whatever right you know <laughs> some <laughs> you know who's the get 17 the, year old the kids off the track <laughs> but but look yeah you can see there were and and these were like you know the hard days when the cars got ridiculous they first started to get like like really really crazy with the aerodynamics right. ground effects a lot of downforce uh, you, you saw some amazing racing there but yeah. when we met with um with tim horeni remember he's he he said something like yeah, man those cars like the thing is that Max Verstappen, as as much as his skill is, as much as, much as he has skill and every right to his seat and, and whatever, he probably wouldn't have been able to had to like really manhandle the cars of this era. <laughs> Not to take anything away from him, uh, but anyway, just so I, I found it pretty that's, interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting note. Um, of this, I wanted to say that definitely like these two guys, when they were youngest drivers, that got a a, a youngest. Uh, you know they're in the top ten of the youngest guys that that won a Grand Prix, and then they went on to like have successful careers after him. I'm not so sure. I don't really want to count him because it was just the Indi yeah, right it, it was just Indianapolis. <laughs> but you know, but these two though, when when looking at the big picture, you can count them as outliers, mm -hmm. right? Like they're way over here. You can see though that on this side, from the '90s onwards, it it does form a little bit of a pattern right. that these drivers that are completing like that that are getting their that have been the youngest uh to complete a grand prix it's getting it's getting younger it's getting younger as the time progresses and it does seem to follow at least a bit of a pattern there's a trend line that i that i added there I very brusquely added there mm -hmm. in, in in light red uh, for our listeners uh this uh this presentation will be available if you want to check it out just the presentation uh it will be in the links in the commentary in the comments anyway but um <laughs> Dr. Andrew Phillips of F1 Metrics would probably not approve of that trend line, but it's, <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it, it does seem to fall apart. But and now let's go back again and, 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 and review these names. So again, that's we're talking about Schumacher, Kubica, Raikkonen, Hamilton, Alonso, Vettel, and Verstappen, mm -hmm. right? Out of this list, look at it right now, most of, well, quite, most of them are still in it. Well, are, are in F one except for Kubica and Michael Schumacher. Mm -hmm. um, but these guys, Michael Schumacher, multiple world champion, Raikkonen, world champion, Alonso, double world champion, 
Hamilton, triple, triple world champion. Wow. Vettel, quadruple. quadruple world champion. We will never know. We're going to see a quintuple Verstappen. We will never know what Kubica would have done. But Kubica was one of those names that I remember like back before his accident. So what happened is that he had a very promising F1 career ahead of him. People were basically like making as much hype of him as people have been about Hamilton. Uh, the, mm-hmm. There was a huge interest from Poland. He's, Pol- he's, he's, he's Polish. But then uh, in the off season or, or at one point, he actually went and raced that rally. And he got into a huge accident. Uh-oh. And after that, he couldn't recover. And his career oh, in F1 was doomed. So we will never know what Kubica could have achieved. But he was definitely in the path. And looking at this line, you can't help but see that Verstappen, he's, he's been doing the right things. For sure. Uh, like he's, he, he's, yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely in line. It's, it's not... So he's, he's, he's joined a very exclusive group that everybody pretty much, it's at least since the 90s, any any driver that did their first uh, or th- that had the youngest Grand Prix victory went on to win a, ch- a championship. Except for Kubica, but we'll never know. Right? Oh man! Right? So this it's is fantastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, though, I do have to say that looking at this, th- th- there is another thing that that I do want to point out, and it's that that line there uh, that I just added right around. Oh shit, Mike! Check out your camera. Sorry, sorry guys. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because this green line represents an introduction, and now, and now this is where I get when I when I start to get cynical, because Uh-oh. clearly there's a pattern there, yeah. right? This, that green line from just before 1990 and just after 1990, the first couple of years, a couple of years before and a couple of years after, coincides with the introduction of two key things that we still have today in F1 the semi-automatic and automatic gearbox says with the flappy paddles Mm -hmm. and power steering Uh... two key things that in a way moved it away from being this this era of the great gladiators that 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 used to have to manhandle the car um and Mm -hmm. and and gave room to the smooth drivers to the guys that could finesse the corners in, right. in, 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 in a way. So I did find that very interesting. Um, and maybe, I mean, as, whereas for sure, nothing can be taken away from what, what, Verstappen, what Verstappen has done. Mm-hmm. It, we shouldn't honestly get carried away 100% by saying, you know what, this is uh, the next coming of Christ or, any, <laughs> or anything like that. Right. It is, I think, in a way... Um, a symptom of the times, right? Um, a symptom of that. There, 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 that, there was definitely a, a, a change in the way that the, the requirements of you as a driver yeah, well, before. Good, good for him and all that, but I'm not going to start cheering for him. I'm not a fan all of a sudden. Yeah, <laughs> no, just I, I just want to like to to point that this definitely made me like just just to try to keep things in perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that mm-hmm. if with enough time, like. Maybe somebody will break that record, even if regulations get like that, because maybe that's what you need to win these days. And if you if you look, because what comes with youth, mm. right? With youth comes that feeling that you can pretty much get away with anything because you're not tied to anything, right? You got you got you got you got nothing to lose, so why not try it? Why not go for that for that gap? Why not um, engage in the, you know have that youthful impetus and if the car is maybe less physical to drive, then the skills that like will make you the winner, given the right car, is that is you know, on top of like you know you start with the with a basis of talent and of good racecraft and all that and all the things that you learn through karting. But the the last step would be to having to have that 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 enthusiasm that that energy and that right. not giving a fuck to go for the, for that gap and and and, yeah. and to not be stressed yeah. to not have things tying you down like family like kids like res- other responsibilities right. life and, in general yeah, li- yeah life doesn't get when life doesn't get in the way of your driving mm-hmm. and that's all you need to win grand prix and to be great is to not crack under pressure but it's probably a little bit easier to do that if you don't have a kid mm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, then it only makes sense that it's a young man's game now. Mm. That that's just what F one is these days. Yeah. But you would, I, I would say, you would want that. But but 
from uh, from uh, getting fans into a sport. Do you want? Do whether you want it or not, really? Then it it all becomes to like the question of the age right now. It all goes back to it. What is Formula One? What is the pinnacle of motorsports? Mm -hmm. Because if you there are there are technical innovations that get that get added to the cars and, and in a way for F1 to be the pinnacle of motorsports to, 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 to be able to even you even have a realistic claim to that title mm -hmm. it has to be it has to move with the technology it has to be the most technologically advanced um, motorsport that is right. just what it has to do yep. because of the development of road cars around you and the speed or, or technology makes you faster in many ways, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the car's technology to begin with, anyways. Exactly, the car is technology. Exactly. Right. Um, so, so the, the two things go hand in hand. Now, there's there's technology that gets added to these F1 cars now for many many things. It's, there's technology uh, in terms of uh, aerodynamics. There's all kinds. Of, everything is yeah, braking anything. Mm -hmm. But if we look at these um, advancements, like the uh, power steering and, uh, and and the flappy paddles, like you could, you could say that like these were things that are things that are added to a car to make it more manageable at higher speeds mm -hmm. in a way, right? right? Things also like ABS, mm -hmm. like traction control, that kind of stuff. There's innovations. There's technology that gets introduced into the sport to make it easier for a driver to drive at speed. To, to be easier for a driver to be able to control yeah. at, at, at high speeds. A lot of those get banned because you have to thread a very fine line in between what is like acceptable technology and what is driver aid. Right. Somehow, well, if for some reason, somebody has drawn a line, rightfully some, I'm sure there's like very credible reasons that uh, things like the flappy paddle gearbox and, uh, power steering. and power steering are not driver aids. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're just technologies there to like help the guys go faster. But then this goes back to um, to what I had said before, a couple of episodes ago. Listen, if you're gonna if you're gonna be okay with like some of these technologies uh, that I'll, that do legitimately allow a driver make their drive make their driving easier, make it easier for them to control the car mm -hmm. um, under those speeds, then that should go hand in hand with allowing them to to race at higher speeds as well i think that the grooves in the tires in 2004 maybe shouldn't have been introduced uh, to, to slow the cars down all all these rules to like to, to slow the car down that got introduced for safety mm -hmm. just to slow the cars down should never have been introduced and if they weren't i feel like maybe we wouldn't we would see different names here in this in 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 this chart here and maybe right. maybe it wouldn't look so regular after the 90s because once the speed goes fat go, goes higher there's other challenges that come into play mm -hmm. that's not just of like do you have enough balls do you care about nothing enough to like go for oh, that right, gap right. right then your racecraft and like really like your your ability like to see things before they happen mm -hmm. uh that 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 is uh, more important really um, so anyway, I, I just can't help but feel that if perhaps with the advancement in, in technology that allows the driver to, to drive better under speed, they would have like just added a bit more speed to the car. Right. So we, right. we, we probably would have seen more of like maybe what people want. Uh, I don't now, know. Now, wh where did Bernie come in? He came in like in this era. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he was part of these decisions then to yes to, to change all the cars. And... Yes, but uh, the FIA also like had a had a higher role and the teams. Ah, okay. And but yes, this was this this all uh, some of these uh, developments definitely would have been deemed acceptable at one point or another by Mister E. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's uh, any thoughts? You're done talking about Vettel. I mean Verstappen. <laughs> Thanks. So. The young the young guys. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I got nothing else about that. What a good looking graph that is, eh? That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Incredible. Yeah, you can uh, take it down. You guys want to take a little break and then come back? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll be back. We got some testing, tear offs, and some other odd stories from this past weekend. Cool. See you guys in a bit. Yeah.
It's mm-hmm. here. Pull up those pictures that that to be. Oh yeah. Oh, there we go. Here's the first one. This is the morning times. Anyway, for the, the morning before lunch break, button was the fastest. Button was the fastest. Wow. He beat Vettel by a point zero one zero. <coughs> almost nothing. But he beat Rosberg by a point one one point three, which is pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. All the way down to Force India, which was almost five seconds back from Button. Crazy. Ooh. Yeah, Almost the same number of laps, too. Everyone did between 40 and 50 laps or so, 35 to 50 laps. Mm-hmm. Then uh, if you can go to that second link there, the last one. These are from uh, Tobias Gruner, mm-hmm. our pal there. He's got the, f- the full numbers for the day. Vettel chops, tops the charts. Nice. Beat the Mercedeses by 0.1 seconds. What, what I, so now, this is just a chance for them to test like many things for next year. Uh, whatever they want, like, whatever they want to yeah, test, yeah, stuff whatever. for later this season. So, it's with the test. with the increased aerodynamics that we that we can expect next year, that's that's one thing that um, these teams are going to be testing. But who was it? Williams had an extra wing. Did you see that? They're the, testing yeah, yeah. the downforce. Do, do we levels. have the pictures? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. All right, there it is. Check yeah. it out. Click click on that uh, eighty seven builder <laughs> picture. Uh, look, yeah, just yeah. Look at that. That looks crazy. Yeah, for anyone watching, we're looking at uh, Williams through an extra second wing on their back rear with the wing today wing with side. some extra elements that stick out the side and whatnot. Designed to, uh, I guess, mimic the downforce we can expect next year. Yeah. That's insane, See how it affects man. their car, see how wow. the driver feels. Look at that. That's going to be so much more downs for it. downforce. Mm-hmm. I'm, I this got is, downs. <laughs> <laughs> this is an extra small addition, I guess, in addition to what we have this year but next year i guess you can expect like an average of both wings well i mean it's shorter gonna, it's gonna wider and shorter fatter. yeah it's not keep, gonna keep, look keep like clicking. this at all jeez it's not keep clicking we got a shitload of pictures here Let's just go through them and see if anything comes up crazy yeah, that's what it looks just like. keep clicking I don't, nothing's gonna be too special i guess but yeah you can get a get an idea from testing young, what young drivers uh in the mix uh renault testing yeah, out that their boy ocon Getting him his uh, enough mileage for for his super license. I think he he is already eligible uh, uh, because of his many. Esteban Ocon. Yeah. Sounds Spanish, actually French. He's, he's French. Alex Lynn for Williams. Alfonso Celis yeah. driving for Force India. Pierre Gasly driving for Toro Rosso. Red Bull using their own drivers. Uh, Ricciardo driving today. Pascal Verlaine today for Manor. Good All the teams switching it up tomorrow, as far as I know, too. No Saubers in the mix. No Saubers. Saubers could not afford to attend testing so this weird, week. Man. Romain so, Grosjean so for, for Haas, for his own team, doing Course. testing. Yeah. Jensen Button for I mean, his well, I own mean, team I mean, for McLaren. Jesus, Third I, fastest I, I, today. Haas and their extensive uh, young driver development program. I can believe they're going to pick it up for it. <laughs> Nico Rosberg for Mercedes, driving today. 0.117 seconds behind Vettel, driving for Ferrari. Yeah. The scuderia, man. I mean, it was scratching heads, man. And yeah. Jesus. There's a Red Bull with the air rakes on it. What are those? For those are pitot tubes. They all uh, measure airspeed going into them. And then they get an array of airspeed and see like how air is flowing past the tire. To see, oh, wow. to see if like the the so way that see- the air moves simulated in the computers matches real life. Ah. Also, see, these each, things here. Each of those sticks facing forwards is a hole with an ah, air pressure okay. sensor behind it. And then they'll graph out in 3D the pressures on that whole array. Oh, cool. And you can get sort of like an, uh, a I dynamic f- sort of chart of how the air flows over the tires, the front tires. These three things here on either side wouldn't have been, or and this is what a lot of people are saying, that uh, they, they wouldn't have been included last year. Um, like nobody, like anybody that, like, whenever we see these tests, we just see this, this big part here, mm-hmm. um, if yeah. anything. But these three on either side are apparently just or some people are speculating that they're there to see how like, the air could potentially be affected if there was the, a canopy the canopy yeah. or the halo yeah 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 and oh, speaking wow. of halos next week at monaco ferrari is set to test the second version of their halo which uh, apparently i guess i think it will be hinged with a clip or something like that with a latch something like that to make it uh, easier it's not like a fixed one what they tested last time so this one will test uh 
it, I guess it can open a lot easier from the driver, like with a one touch type of thing can open up to not uh, obstruct his exit from the car. Mm. Should he need to get out quickly? Mm. But we'll see. I guess in one of the free practices, Ferrari is set to test a new Halo, the Halo 2. <laughs> Halo. No relation to Xbox or Microsoft <laughs> or video games. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what comes out of that next or two weeks, I guess, at the next race. Don't have any pictures or anything of it yet. Nobody knows what it looks like. Now this but, uh, uh, the Williams thing here. Yeah. Um, isn't the 2017 going to be much lower? And now, wouldn't that affect it differently? Yes, 100% it will. But uh, right. if what they wanted to test with this is just how like the floor of the car or the tires would actually react to that added load, right. then they don't need they don't if they're if what they're testing here with this is not aerodynamics, then it's uh, then it serves the same purpose. Uh, or they could they could have put heavier tensioning bars or springs or hydraulics. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Suspension. suspension and yeah. See how much force they need to hold their suspension up okay with the, with okay. the expected load from next year because they would put that wing high this year because i mean just the whole like aerodynamics of the car is set to that. aim the air up there right right to, to okay. hit that wing to bounce off that wing and add down force yeah so but i think it's like the preseason testing next year is going to be the most crazy we'll see everything come out so Williams, okay. I just wanna, I just wanna point something out. Mm -hmm. Thinking ahead, maybe. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna say for once, but thinking maybe cleverly ahead. Um, clearly wanting to get on top of that situation because I don't know if you remember, but their problem since last year and so far this year has been getting, getting those rears to work to fight. Getting the maximum performance of the rear tires, mm -hmm. and if they're if they, clearly they're focused on that, they know that if they solve that problem, or at least that's what they're betting that if they solve that problem of their of the rear tire management, they're gonna go further along next year. Which is, I mean, you know, kudos for them. At least, at least they're trying something forward thinking. Yeah, a lot of what happened yeah. with Williams this year and what <clears throat> what maybe. It was sort of forecasted by uh, Pat Simmons when he did that podcast with the Motorsport Magazine at the very beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. He said he was he was he was kind of honest about it. He was like, "We tried a couple of revolutionary things with the car, mm -hmm. but you won't but you won't see it." Like before, this was even before the the cars were unveiled. He before said, the season, yeah, yeah. He's like, "We tried a couple of different things, revolutionary things. They didn't work." So he's like, "Basically, they wasted a bunch of time on some development that wasn't taking them anywhere. Right. So they that's why their car is very similar this year from last year. But maybe we can expect something actually revolutionary and forward thinking from Williams next year, which would be good." But don't forget, from the first half of the show, Williams, the only team so far this year that scored points with both drivers in every race. Yeah. That's the only, they're the only team they have managed consistency. It's, it's, they're, it's, and they're up there. It's showing. It's a points. team with two good number two drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Where did uh, Williams place pretty high up last year, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, they were um, yeah. like fourth, fifth. Yeah, fourth. Like yeah. I don't know what happened to it. I was trying to find, there was a link of the two of them drawing drawing each other oh, yeah. it's pretty funny i kind of lost it though i don't know <laughs> if if you want to look it's pretty funny there's a picture of bottas and master trying to draw each other on a, on a giant easel if you if you it, it's, it, a bit it's one of those uh, pictures that made the front page of reddit so you know it's good it's got the red <laughs> approval yeah B bottas <laughs> nailed the hair the hair the hair was perfect <laughs> The hair was beautiful. Uh, I like those two guys, and I like the way the Williams do their shit. I just wish that uh, um, that perhaps that the, the, that they were doing more, or they had done more in the past to make sure that the sustainability of the previous success was gonna carry on. Because in my point of view, right at the top of the links. They they probably had all the opportunity, or at least they had a great opportunity when they were winning championships back in the day, to um, to ensure Williams to lock, sustain to lock, lock their sustain sustain their Jesus their yes. dominance. Yeah. Awful. <laughs> there it is. We got it up for the viewers. Oh my goodness! This came from uh, Massa's Instagram. That is Massa just kind of drew a stick, man. It looks like he got his son. He commissioned his son. 
Oh, <laughs> Botas at, also dude, looks like No, it. those but eyebrows, I, you could interchange. The, the eyebrows and the hair is yeah, perfect. It is. It's perfect. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ, Botas, he got it. <laughs> the smile is almost perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. <laughs> wow. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Massa Felipe in 19 on Instagram if you want to see it. It's there from the it's there from the weekend. Uh good guy that Massa always point always posting entertaining stuff. <laughs> well, I guess I guess next week we'll have to come back with more uh, updates from the testing. Of course. Yes. T- t- it's only been we've all we got is data from the morning, a bit from the afternoon, that's it. But we'll see next week coming up before the race if anything's affecting it. Something that we do know, you, without talking about Monaco too much, because yeah. we'll come back to the next week, is the new rule that mm-hmm. was supposed to be brought in this weekend it got delayed on tariffs. Oh, yes. Ted was talking about this. Tariffs, yeah. Ted was talking about this. I remember, I swear to God, this seems we- weird or like I'm talking shit. <laughs> that race, you remember where I think it was at Spa two years ago, a car got... Uh, knocked out of the race because they got a tear off in the brake duct. Yes. Was that Raikkonen? I I don't remember exactly who it was, but I remember that. You know what? Raikkonen what? hits a bell, rings a bell. I remember seeing yeah. that tear off go like this and flutter, and I was like, I wonder what would happen if one of those guys. You, you actually, I, I was watching the race with you, and you said the exact same thing. Yes. No, no, no. Man, like a minute, and, and then, then a minute like, later, two or three laps later, yeah. yeah, one car is like, oh no, I got over overheating brakes. And you know they have those clear. Yeah, th- yeah. They pull, They get too many <laughs> bugs and and dirt in their face. One of them went in the brake duct and, and knocked oil. the car out. Yeah, and oil, all kind, all kinds of shit. I got another picture here for you. Yeah, th- this all came about because, but well, that precipitated it, and and, and, yeah, and it was a real danger that it could something could get stuck. Uh, oh yeah. So what what teams have been doing up until the last couple weekends this is pretty cool just put in kind of like a mosquito mesh so what we mercedes got, was doing that for sure <clears throat> what we got on this the screen here is and it depends I think, on the I think Mer- track too no i think mercedes was one of the few teams that was doing it not a, not a lot of teams like i know ferrari hasn't been doing anything like this but mercedes definitely like took the lead with like a mosquito net thing <laughs> it, it depends on the team too because some of the teams have their brake ducts at the front some have them at the back some have them behind one of the suspension arms some have them open yeah but they sort of had like a mosquito net for those that are looking. And now they've changed it to some veins that sort of would looks, deflect and the plastic it, it, can't get stuck in. It looks like a like a hair clipper guard almost. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> the, it's, ta- it's taken two years. But as no, because Monaco, you know why they did that? Because uh, when that they had the mosquito net thing. Yeah, when, when they had the mosquito net looking thing. The plastic. It's just like a saran wrap where you put over your leftovers. No, a, a bit of a fucking a marble got stuck there and wouldn't come out. And that's what was overheating oh, Nico Rosberg's brakes. A marble? Uh, you like, what, like a tire? The marbles, one of those little, uh, the little balls that roll off the tires. Oh, fuck. You know, yeah, like, they call them marbles. Like, Sorry. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, I was like. You know, you see all that black shit all over the yeah, track, yeah. and there's sort of like a path. You, where you the sh- cars usually, go. like uh, towards the end of the race, there's tons of that shit, like not in the racing line. Yeah, that's people call them marbles. But yeah, <laughs> they're just basically like little bite-sized pieces of rubber that gets discarded from yeah. the tires as they, as they, you know, as they, get, as the race takes its toll. So, yeah. I- I couldn't find the clip today, but I'm sure you can find it on YouTube or Vimeo if you if you spend an extra few minutes. You can find that tear off ruining someone's race. As of Monaco, it was supposed to be this race. For some reason, they pushed it back. I guess for to go through testing first. Yeah. Or just whatever typical F one stubbornness. Yeah. At Monaco, you're gonna have to keep those tear offs inside the car, either in some sort of a glove box, or uh, as Ted was demonstrating in uh, Ted's notebook. <laughs> like this, they're gonna have an extra pocket sewn onto their their, their, <laughs> their overalls and just tear them off and stuck them, stick them into their overalls, like in inside. Our extra they can't pocket. just like just throw them in the car. No, because no, pit- they're just kind of just like like a tornado, just uh, kind of like spin yeah. around and fly out. Like like it's like the or, back of a pickup truck. Or right, they okay. they could get stuck in like you know like behind like somebody's in like, their own air duct right? or like something like you that. Might yeah. get stuck in your own air duct. You yeah. don't want that either. That's right? true. Yeah. So that's the rule. You're gonna have to stick them in your pockets, and I'm I'm, I'm sort of working. Well, maybe in a week or two, I'll come back with it. A sort of helmet uh, production for this podcast. <laughs> I talk about all the helmets, but it's it's weird. Some of the drivers prefer to have just two or three tear offs. That's what they want to race with. Yeah. Because you notice when they start the race, you'll see like 
they pull down their visors, especially if it's really sunny, and they got bubbles under them, like they're yeah. not smoothed out. Right. My my uncle does vinyl graphics for a living. Like he used to do yeah. like for the Maple Leafs, like the boards, like you just yeah. like, plastic signs, like you know, for a store, like Tim Hortons has a sign. Yeah. Anything like that. Th- that type of shit, you can smooth it out. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know absolutely. what I mean? Like he's a pro like you can smooth it out. Whoever's doing these tear offs. I wanted to tell my uncle, man, you should be like just an F1 tear off guy, like <laughs> doing this. He's so good at vinyl. <laughs> These guys all have bubbles in their vision. Like they're trying to see through like eight bubbles and then they tear one off. They get seven bubbles. Six. <laughs> but apparently some of the drivers only like two or three tear offs. I remember, I think it it's was uh, Pastor Maldonado. I remember like noticing that he, like he used to race with like six of those steros are more even like like his his thing like he had like so many of those like pull things on either <laughs> side and and the way the way that it works is that um they're done in such a way that like they're they're kind of connected like Kleenexes or something like okay. where like so you pull like <laughs> yeah. first from the right but then the next one you have to pull from the left and then from the right oh from interesting from the right. Right. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Remember in, in the old days, like we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, they had the big goggles on and then they just end up with like all o- kinds open, of oil, man. Masks, but you have yeah. like oil and, and look at, tire look, bits. And look up, look up, extra, okay, just Google this, man, right Your now. Face and uh, lungs with Sterling two Moss oil face. But these dudes would <laughs> race with two pairs of goggles, so they'd have to keep a second one around their neck <laughs> in case they got hit by a stone in the face. Hey, see these guys? This is how they used to come out of the race. Oh my god! <laughs> like, look at him. He's so happy. Look, look at these like two. all these guys. Imagine. I don't know how their teeth are still clean, but they imagine their lungs, their, their yeah. nostrils, look their sinuses, their arms, man. Their arms. Yeah, they had gloves on. <laughs> Jeez. That's how you used to race. He's like a man. <laughs> yeah, look at them. <laughs> He's got one of those fake plastic masks. <laughs> Anyways, starting from Monaco, no more throwing them out the window. Yeah. No more littering as part of the race. <laughs> it sends the hundreds. wrong message to the children. Yeah. Hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of tear offs. You hell? gotta recycle. Yeah, you gotta recycle, man. <laughs> um <laughs> It's 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 a funny, it's a peculiar uh, problem that uh, that F one kind of finds it's, uh, itself in. Well, w- one of the one of the many, I, s- <laughs> I should say. Um, what else you got for this week? I think uh, I think um, that's that's pretty much about it, man. I think uh, let's uh, the last we'll thing get, I got we'll here. Close let, let's, soon. Let's play the Tima de Vitoria to close out the show. Oh yeah, this was cool. Um, All right, so just, hold on, fuck that up. So oh, so this was something cool <laughs> that. Uh, that, there that we happened uh, just to as bernie's trying to tell us that this that, that, that f1 has no future or you know that he wouldn't take his family uh we see that perhaps like yeah no, i think we can play the brother. song we can play the song yeah we can definitely play I the song so, so so what happened you notice this on, on an mma fight yeah so i have you probably heard from this show i'm a bit of an mma fan yeah pay-per-view this weekend championship fight ufc 198 yeah held in carabita brazil brazil the third largest event of all time over forty five thousand people there so this dude play play the song play the song just play, let's play it over, over this quick segment this is the tema de vittoria the winning theme the, <laughs> don't, don't show this on, on the, the theme of victory the theme of winning that's Ayrton Senna used to play I guess he, he <laughs> celebrated with this song so everyone knows Ayrton Senna was Brazilian Brazilians have a lot of national pride Ayrton Senna da Silva do Brazil yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he was the world champion everybody knew who he was no, so, no, no, Ayrton Senna was not just a world champion. He was, he was a hero. The championship of the solar hero. system. Hero. Hero of the solar system. <laughs> so as, as far as MMA fighting, we don't need to go into details about the fights, but the man, this man, Fabricio Verdum, mm-hmm. is a Brazilian man. He was the world heavyweight champion, fought this weekend in his hometown against Stipe Miocic. Came out. Let's, let's show this picture as well here. Let's show him coming out. He came out. With the Senna flag waving instead of his country's flag and came out to this song. It works a lot like uh, boxing does where you have like your theme song. You come out to your song, you celebrate, everyone goes crazy. You can see the, the crowd the crowd loving it. He tried to hand out 45,000 paper masks <laughs> of, his- of his own face, the fighter, Fabrizio Verdum. He tried to hand them out at the stadium and he got 
reject. They, he got denied by the stadium owners. They're like, you can't, you can't put this on television. Yeah. <laughs> he forced everyone to throw them out. But there, you can see the picture here for the watchers. He came out with the Senna flag. They're both world champions, both Brazilians. Lots of pride. It was, it was nice to see the, the combination. Very cool. Two world championships, challenges in one weekend for me. That was this song is a bit cheesy. Yeah, this <laughs> song is very, days. It's very nice. But you know, 91, 92, that was the yeah. shit. I was kind of digging it, <laughs> totally honest. <laughs> <laughs> um and and now for a better song, if I if I'm if I'm completely honest. Wow, I'm not sure if we can compare them. <laughs> um, Sorry for the ev- internet failure this week. That's yes. how it goes. Uh, everybody, thanks thanks for watching again. Uh, honestly we uh, Jesus Christ! Episode sixty. Thanks to uh, and, we're and almost many retired. more will come. <laughs> These episodes are almost retired. Five more. Let's, Seven more. Seven more right now. Let's let, let's keep her going. Uh, next week. Uh, well, we don't have a race, but um, if you are in Toronto or anywhere near Toronto, I want to say again for the Monaco Grand Prix, we will be at Betty's three o'clock for pre-show, four o'clock the race. Um, more details to come on our website. We'll do we'll do the Reddit, Reddit post or whatever everything that we normally do. I uh, hope to see everybody or as many of you there. Yeah, we'll be back next week with the race preview. And let's not forget the Canadian Grand Prix is coming up. Oh, Woo! Big announcements for there too. Like we're we're gonna be in Montreal. Hope to see you there too again. Peace. Listen to Bamboo.